Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. I am live Tuesdays, Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Mountain Time and Wednesday evenings at 5 p.m. Mountain Time because who doesn't love to get into their PJs after a long day of work? I certainly do. Welcome if you're brand new to Painting in Your PJs. Thank you for being here. This channel is all about creative process using art as a tool for personal discovery and personal growth, for self-discovery and personal growth. And I am particularly passionate about supporting women in midlife to get out of that murky, messy middle, out of all the crazy changes that we experience and enjoy a renaissance in your life. And I love doing that using art and writing and have a variety of programs I teach and retreats that I offer, most of which you can find at manette.teachable.com, although we're in the middle of switching platforms and everything is going to change. But that's where I'm at today. If you're brand new, thank you for being here. Please hit that subscribe button. Click the little notification bell so you get notified when I go live. And if you like what I share with you today, then please do click that like button so we can let other people know that what I'm up to is a video worth watching. So thank you so much. So this month, October, is all about my two of my favorite, favorite things. Mary Oliver's poetry, specifically from her anthology Devotions, and Zentangle. And it is the month of Inktober, which is all about drawing with pen and ink, and Inktober Tangles specifically, which is a gorgeous curated list of prompts or Zentangle patterns to try and explore. And I'm having a lot of fun with this list and some challenges. Some of these patterns are really, really tricky and it's been kind of interesting to kind of notice, right, some of the, the differences and the things that are going on and um, I've had to really practice with some of the patterns as I've started to get going with Inktober Tangles. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera. <clears throat> so I am literally drawing inside of Mary Oliver's book of poems called Devotions. Again, this is an anthology. I think it might have even been published posthumously. And I love Mary Oliver's poetry. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I've been having fun just sort of randomly opening the book to select a page to focus on. I'm going to mute myself for just a second. <clears throat> I feel like my voice is still waking up this morning, so apologies. And I have two very crazy cats in the background. So this was day one. The pattern was Be Light. I love this pattern. It's a Zentangle classic. And there's been a lot of interesting ones along the way that I've been enjoying exploring. And so there are some pre-recorded videos from the first few days as well as a few of these live videos. And this was day four, which was Sunbelt. I'm a little bit behind. I'm hoping I can start to catch up a little bit today. So uh, this is Sunbelt by Jodi Genovese. I hope I'm saying her name right. It's a gorgeous pattern. This Flame Flower by Deb Boyer is definitely a favorite. But one of my favorites so far are these gorgeous hearts. This pattern called Caro by Lucy Farron. I think this was, this was way back in, in day three. So there's videos with the step outs for each of these. And today I want to do day six and maybe even day seven as well. So day six is a lovely pattern called Imaritas. I'm not sure I'm saying that right or Imaritas. And the author of this one. Let me get back over to my Google Drive here. Bear with me for just a second. Debbie New. So Debbie New is the creator of this. And then day seven is another of my favorite tangle patterns. And I'm getting some some fuzzies again today. So let's see if we can. I'm having definitely some 
focus issues and I'm not sure why this keeps going in and out of focus. So I apologize for that little bit of fuzziness there. It won't be so fuzzy when I'm drawing. But day seven is found about, which is a um, pattern from Zentangle headquarters and one of my absolute favorites. All right, I know my husband said there was a way to fix the focus, but I don't think I can do that while I'm live. So I'm going to deal with it today and we're going to go ahead and start with this poem that I randomly opened the page to called It Was Early by Mary Oliver. <clears throat> it was early which has always been my hour to begin looking at the world, and of course, even in the darkness, to begin listening into it, especially under the pines where the owl lives and sometimes calls out. As I walk by, as he did on this morning, so many gifts, what do they mean? In the marshes where the pink light was just arriving, the mink with his bristle tail was stalking the soft-eared mice. And in the pines, the cones were heavy, each one ordained to open. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Little mink, let me watch you. Little mice, run and run. Dear pine cone, let me hold you as you open. It was early by Mary Oliver absolutely beautiful poem about early mornings and all the things we can see when we're up early and all the things that we can appreciate as well. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me for a second and I'm going to see if I can, so my camera may go funky here for a minute and I'm going to see if I can work on my focus a little bit. I'm not sure why I'm struggling. Okay, well that didn't help anything. All right. Apologies, I'll see if Brad maybe can, there we go, that looks better. If we can edit some of that out. Okay, much better. And now we're going to go back to video camera. All right. That looks 100% better. So thank you for bearing with me there for a second while I got that focus fixed up a little bit. The camera doesn't seem to want to stay focused, but this is a live show. This is what happens when you're going live. <clears throat> and now you can see some of the words to the poem. So here we are. It is day six and the pattern is Imaritas by Debbie New. I-M-A-R-I-T-A-S. Imaritas by Debbie New. Super excited to share this particular pattern with you because I always love anything that's a floral pattern. And in this particular case, she was inspired
follow one stroke at a time. There's no mistakes in Zentangle. And so one stroke at a time is the process and practice that allows us to create these really beautiful patterns. So I'm going to draw And then I'm going to come back up here to the top and I'm going to add some petals to fill out my flower. So I'm going to start with a little triangle shape, maybe slightly taller than my center. And I'm going to pull that shape all the way down to the bottom, to the top of my heart here, slightly curved so it looks like my petals are stacked. And then on the outside, I'm going to make a couple that are a little bit on the shorter side so we get this nice full pattern. Actually, all the way this way. So I'm going to do that triangle shape, bring it all the way down. And they're going to gradually get smaller. And we added one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Having that nice symmetry in there. This is such a lovely, simple floral pattern that becomes more dramatic when we add some shading to it. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to sort of just blacken in the tips a little bit to create some of that contrast that I really love. And I'm even going to come in and add some little triangular shapes to give my leaf a little bit more contrast and dimension. And then I also love just adding a couple of little flicks to the base of these little floral shapes at the bottom. And what if I imagined that this was actually a flower? One of the many sights that Mary Oliver was seeing on her early morning walk. And I gave it a stem. And because I gave it a stem and it's kind of sitting there all on its own, what if we added another one? And we start to build a bouquet of these lovely Imaritas flowers. And then maybe I'm going to have another one come up here. And again, we're going to come in with that little three humped flower there. Go ahead and add those little flicks. I'm going to divide this space in half. This one's a little smaller, so I'm just going to have two of those curved lines. <clears throat> and 
Oops, I forgot my little hearts first. Then I'm going to add the hearts to the bottom. Again, give it a little weight there. And then I'm going to add my petals. And on this one, I'm just going to add four petals. Little smaller, looks a little bit like maybe it's closed up a little more tightly. And again, coming in and just blackening up those tips a bit. It's sort of artichokey, right? It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, a thistle or an artichoke. It's a really lovely pattern. And then we're going to come over and work on this third one here. When you think about design and composition, it's great to think in threes. Threes create visual interest and openness. I'm going to do our inverted C shapes there. Give those little blackened triangles in the center. And one, two, three, four. I'll tuck a fifth one in there. One, two, little triangle all the way back down. Three, four, five. And we can vary the pattern and the shape of the flowers and how open they look through those that simple layering of the petals. Do we want it to be wider? Do we want it to be more narrow? And I'm thinking I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some fescue, which is another of my favorite Zentangle patterns. It's a like a, a wild grass or a seed pattern. So we can sort of land our flowers a little bit in the landscape. And maybe I'm going to come in here and add some poke leaf. So all of a sudden, instead of just a random flower on the page, we have a little mini landscape. Poke leaf is one of my mac and cheese tangles. Hi, Mom. Good morning. You're up and about early. And I think I like this leaf shape because they're like little mini upside down hearts. And there we have our very simple, simple, simple pattern for day six of Inktober Tangles. I kind of want this to come, bring all these down just a little bit. And maybe I'm even going to imagine that there's some ground there. I'm going to add my chop there. And I also like to definitely um, write down the name of the pattern. So this is Imaritas. Imaritas by Deb New. And this is day six of Inktober Tangles. That way I remember. So not only do I end up having this really beautiful illustrated book of poetry, but I also end up with a fun reference guide to a lot of new Zentangle patterns as well. I'm almost thinking this one would be fun to 
add a little bit of color. And I'm going to go ahead and do day seven as well, which is one of my favorite patterns, which is found about. And I'm going to go ahead and just do it on this page on this little short poem. I love Mary Oliver's like sweet little short poems. This one says, we shake with joy. We shake with joy. We shake with grief. What a time they have, these two housed as they are in the same body. Love, love, love that simple poem. So give me a second. I'm going to go find my step outs for found about. I think I took a picture of it the other day as I was practicing. Maybe I did not. So bear with me just a second. It's a little bit tricky and so I always like to have the a visual of the step out so I make sure that I'm giving you the right instructions. So it's another gorgeous leafy pattern. Again, this one is from Zentangle HQ from headquarters, so designed by the originators of Zentangle. And you can really have a, a lot of fun with this gorgeous pattern. And so the way this pattern starts, it's super simple. So I think I'm going to start it right from this little line in the center of the page and let it grow up around our page here. I'm going to draw them a little bit bigger. Sometimes when I'm learning a new pattern, I like to draw it bigger. And so these are like long curved skinny triangles, right? Long curved skinny triangles. And again, I can curve some of them more. I can change where they originate on the line. And this one I'm having just go kind of straight up the page to sort of fill this page. And you can make as many or as few of these lovely lines as you want. So again, this is the pattern found about for day seven of Inktober Tangles. And then step two is to add our leafy shape. That is a technical term, leafy shape. And this again is, we're going to start at the tip of the line. We're going to curve out and then curve back in. And it kind of reminds me of the top of, as if you were drawing the shape of an eye. And we're going to work our way up our stem. Turning our page as needed. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. Don't get too caught up in perfection. One stroke at a time. And remember there are no mistakes in Zentangle. So there we have the beginning of our found about pattern. And now comes the little bit trickier part is we're going to start to connect these shapes together to flesh out the pattern and it's a little bit of a, a sort of a, a weaving if you will <coughs> excuse me so i'm going to start with this one at the top and i'm going to imagine that there's another half of this leaf right here and that that leaf is layered behind so now it looks like this leaf is growing out of the center of this one. And then I might also stack that one a little bit. And the same thing here, I'm going to start at the top at the point and I'm going to draw behind. I'm going to draw behind. It's one of the principles of Zentangle is to learn to layer things up using this idea of drawing behind. So we draw what's in the foreground first and then work our way backwards. Thanks, mom. 
So again, from the point, drawing behind and then bringing it down here to the bottom. And I'm just going to continue my way down, layering my leaf. And I love this. It sort of feels like a bit of a fountain, right? Like this sort of waterfall of leaves, if you will. And it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful pattern. And I realized I forgot to add shading to the Imaritas, so I will come back at the end and add some shading. And there's a lot that we can do with this particular pattern. We can have things growing out of it, flowing, from it into other things, right? I could add some spirals and fescues. I could add some orbs. And what I'm thinking is I want to maybe add a little decoration inside of these. So I'm going to come in and add a little line of orbs. On the part of the leaf that's tucked behind. So then we're going to get this sort of cascading effect as if these are open and they have these lovely little seed pods inside of them. So little tiny, tiny orbs flowing in my found about. trying to keep my hand out of the way, which is a little bit tricky. So there's one version of found about with a little bit of fun floof added to it with our orbs, but I'm also feeling like wouldn't it be fun to come in and I don't know why I'm feeling like I want to stick some spirals. Almost as if they're little blooms. I'm just tucking in a few little spirals here and there to add just a little more playfulness to our pattern. And also, this one doesn't have a lot of that contrast that some of the other patterns do, so I want to come in and maybe just blacken in those corners. to start to create that little touch of contrast. And then maybe a few more orbs, because who doesn't love orbs? Hi, Georgia. No kitties. My kitties have been very eager for affection this morning. And then I'm thinking, I want it to look as if it's growing up out of something. And over here we did our fescue and our leaves, but maybe some of my favorite mooka pattern. And again, I'm imagining as if I am drawing behind. So rather than just the one single pattern here, now I'm starting to create more of a composition because I have a little bit more luxury of time this morning to sit and play. And I relish that luxury of time to just be able to 
think about the words of Mary Oliver's poem, we shake with joy, we shake with grief. What a time they have, these two, housed as they are in the same body. I absolutely love that. So let's get maybe one more floating up there. And it kind of looks like it's floating up there all by itself. Maybe we'll tuck a few little smaller ones in behind, still using that same principle of drawing behind. So we start to fill in the pattern and add to the page in a way that feels playful because this pattern to me found about is a very playful pattern, a very whimsical pattern. And so I want to be able to just continue to play with the whimsy of it. And I think I'll pause there. I could go crazy continuing to add uh, more and more patterns and let this one really take over the, the same page. So again, this is, and again, I'm going to come in and add my chop, which is just my signature, my initials, and a date of when I drew this. And this is found about. By, I'm going to put ZQ for Zentangle Headquarters, so I remember. And today is day seven of Inktober Tangles and Mary Oliver. And I absolutely love both of these poems. I love how they're different and yet similar. And what I love about Mary Oliver's poetry is the accessibility of it, right? There's not a lot of flowery language or metaphors. There's a lot of connection to nature. So let's come back over here and add some shading. So remember when you're shading Zentangle, it's about creating contrast, not about trying to figure out where the light source is. It's about just giving some dimension. to our patterns because the more contrast, the more drama that we create, the more sort of magical that they start to look. Just shading a tiny little bit in that poke leaf there, help our leaves feel maybe just a little bit more dimensional. And I'm, so I'm looking for those places. It's like, where can I just add a little bit here to make this just a little bit more interesting? And I might even add a little shading there. And then I'm going to come back with my tortillon, with my smudge stick. And I'm just going to soften up all that graphite. And when you first start shading Zentangle patterns, it's important to know add less graphite to start. You can always layer on more graphite. But it's really hard to take it away. It's almost impossible to erase it. And I've noticed that, you know, this cheap book paper, the pencil doesn't move that much. So I have to work a little harder. So when you're working on a, a nice rag paper, a nice 
you know, watercolor or even I love tangling on Bristol vellum paper. The pencil reacts differently. So if you're working in a book like I am and you're wondering what's happening, it's because of the quality of the paper, not anything that you're doing right or wrong. So look at the difference a little bit of shading makes. So no shading, shading. So I love, to me, this is the, the magic of pulling it all together is adding this shading. So I think I wanna add some shading in some of these, you know, places where maybe it's crossing over, maybe some of these orbs, maybe a little bit here in the bulbs. And I'm just sort of intuitively thinking about where can I add that rounding, add that contrast, make these start to just come alive a little bit. There's no right or wrong to shading. Remember, there's no mistakes in Zentangle. I'm also going to shade these nice bulbs of my mucha here. make them feel a little round. And I can even shade a little bit on my prawn tomp, my spiral. So we used orbs found about prawn tomp, which is a version of the spirals and some mucha. So we had quite a few simple versions of patterns here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I find myself sometimes getting a little wee bit frustrated and sometimes I just have to use a little bit more elbow grease to get that pencil to do what I want it to. Because basically this book paper is just inexpensive newsprint, right? So not the, the perfect surface, but for zentangling, but that's okay. I'm gonna make it work because I am so happy to be here pen on paper with the beautiful poems of Mary Oliver. And I find this has been such a great way to get me reading poetry every day. I love poetry and the way to get to understand poetry or write your own poems is to read more poetry, to discover what you like. And the more you read Mary Oliver's poems, the more you start to realize how truly accessible they are. Let's land that one down there as if it's growing up out of the bottom of that page. And there we have day six and day seven from Inktober Tangles and my poems and pattern series featuring the work of Mary Oliver. Thank you so much for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replay. Excited to be back with you guys. I've been traveling a lot and happy to be back on a regular schedule again. and back to having time in my studio every morning for art and writing as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Dr. Manette Riordan, Painting in Your PJs, live with Manette. I will be back tomorrow evening, so that's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time for some evening tingles and poetry. I hope you'll all join me there. And um, remember to give this video a like if you enjoyed what I shared. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye-bye.